The Etruscans, a formidable force in northern Italy, left an indelible mark on history, their dominance shaped by a unique blend of economic prowess and military might that spanned centuries. Anchored in rich mines, their economic strength was the lifeblood of an expansive trade network. This not only fueled their prosperity, but also served as a potent tool for influencing smaller cities through the strategic use of wealth and diplomacy. At the heart of the Etruscan ascendancy was a military tradition echoing the grandeur of ancient Greece. Early Etruscan warfare was mainly centered around an elite aristocratic class. These warriors decked themselves out in some of the finest equipment possible, often beautifully decorated. Although looking distinctively Etruscan, these warriors were influenced by the tactics of the surrounding Italian peoples, who primarily used raiding tactics. Indeed, adopting different styles of warfare would become one of the Etruscans' traits, especially as they came into conflict with peoples such as the Greeks. Swift raids, amplified by the immense wealth amassed through mining, became the cornerstone of Etruscan hegemony. The ability to bribe local governments further solidified their influence, resulting in a southward expansion that seemed unstoppable. This era of expansion saw the Etruscans navigate a time when the Iron Age had yet to dawn upon them. Bronze, cost-effective and readily available, dominated their weaponry and armour. Among their iconic military artefacts was the Etruscan crested helmet, a symbol of both status and wealth. Adorned with intricate designs and animal motifs, this helmet reflected the craftsmanship of a civilization deeply rooted in artistic expression. In addition to the crested helmet, Etruscan armor comprised bronze plates strategically placed to balance protection and mobility. Shields, often crafted from bronze and embellished with intricate designs, ranged in size from large hoplon-style shields to smaller bucklers. The shields were not just defensive tools, but also canvases for symbolic expressions, adorned with motifs that conveyed strength and courage. The Etruscans exhibited a preference for the spear, a thrusting weapon with a bronze spearhead and a butt spike for versatile combat scenarios. Swords, more akin to knives, featured highly decorated hilts that became markers of social distinctions. Iron swords, a luxury reserved for the wealthy elite, stood in stark contrast to the more affordable bronze swords wielded by the common citizenry. In the chaos of battle, the Etruscans eschewed organized systems, engaging in duels reminiscent of the heroic clashes described in Homer's Iliad. Individual skill and bravery took precedence over strategic maneuvers, with short knives and swords as primary weapons for close combat. While this approach proved effective in one-on-one -on -one confrontations, it rendered them vulnerable to more organized and disciplined adversaries. Despite these unconventional tactics, the Etruscans achieved remarkable success conquering and controlling substantial portions of Italy in the early centuries of their civilization. Their legacy endures through the ages, not only in the territories they once dominated, but also in the remarkable artifacts that showcase their intricate metalworking and artistic prowess. The Etruscans, a civilization defined by a delicate balance of economic acumen and military strategy, remain a fascinating chapter in the story of ancient history. In the tale of ancient history, the Etruscans loom large as a powerful force that dominated northern and central Italy long before Rome's ascent. Their enduring influence derived from a dual strategy, leveraging economic power through trade monopolies and projecting military might through strategic warfare. This multifaceted approach enabled the Etruscans to sway smaller Italian nations and cities, either through financial incentives or coercion aligning them with their interests. Yet, the Etruscans faced challenges from emerging powers, particularly from the west and south. The Greek colony of Massila, situated in what is now modern France, emerged as a formidable trading rival, particularly in the lucrative wine trade. Meanwhile, Greek colonies like Tarentum, Croton and the city of Syracuse in the southern Italian peninsula controlled critical trade routes, further complicating Etruscan dominance. This rivalry escalated into piracy and conflict, with the Greeks wielding advanced military technology and dominating both land and sea battles. 
Massilian and Syracusan forces outmaneuvered the Etruscan fleet, whilst the armies of Syracuse and Tarentum united parts of Greek Italy into a small empire, consistently outperformed the Etruscans on land. Greek dominance in warfare became an increasingly obvious problem for the Etruscans. Recognizing the superiority of Greek armor, the Etruscans strategically adopted elements of Greek military tradition, enhancing the protection and mobility of their soldiers on the battlefield. This adoption marked a pivotal moment, reflecting the Etruscans' growing military strength and territorial ambitions in their quest to rival the Greeks and future adversaries like the Romans. Beyond its practical advantages, the adoption of Greek armor held cultural significance, allowing the Etruscans to integrate elements of Greek culture into their own. This openness to new ideas and technologies became a defining trait in their interactions with different civilizations. The result was the emergence of the Etruscan hoplite, a citizen soldier capable of fighting in the traditional Greek manner, while adapting to combat the local skirmisher armies of the Italian mountain tribes. The Etruscan hoplite symbolized civic virtue and the importance of individual participation in defending the community. In examining the arms and armor of the Etruscan hoplites, similarities and differences with their Greek counterparts emerge. Both favored bronze weapons and armor for mobility in warfare, though the Etruscans opted for lighter scale armor and the practical Attica Chalcidian helmet, showcasing their considerations for stamina during battles. Greaves, protecting the lower legs, were common among both cultures, with the Etruscans renowned for their exceptional metalworking, crafting intricate bronze greaves. The hoplon, a large circular shield, played a crucial role in both Greek and Etruscan warfare, serving as a symbol of a soldier's status and a versatile offensive tool. In a further display of cultural exchange, the Etruscans adopted Greek swords, the Xiphos and Kopis, showcasing their embrace of foreign technologies during a period of decline. In battle, the Etruscan hoplite exhibited a dynamic approach, with lighter armor and increased mobility, allowing them to respond quickly to various combat scenarios. Against Greek armies with heavy, restricting armor, the Etruscans' mobility became a strategic advantage, making them a formidable force. In conclusion, the Etruscans' adoption of Greek arms and armor marked a transformative period in their military history. This strategic decision, rooted in the recognition of superior technology and a desire for cultural integration, shaped the Etruscan hoplite into a unique and versatile warrior. The arms and armor they wielded not only reflected their military prowess, but also represented a cross-cultural exchange that defined their legacy in the ancient Mediterranean world. The Etruscans emerged as a formidable civilization that held sway over northern and central Italy, establishing dominance through the wealth generated by expansive mining operations. This prosperity facilitated the establishment of a trade monopoly within their sphere of influence, granting them economic superiority over neighboring regions. As their influence expanded, the Etruscans employed a combination of bribery and coercion to subjugate weaker nations further enlarging their dominion from the Tuscany coast to the Apennine Mountains. The arrival of the Greeks in Italy marked a turning point for the Etruscans. Prior to the Greek influence, Etruscan warfare relied heavily on close combat, but the Greeks introduced advanced tactics, such as phalanxes and projectile weapons. To counter this, the Etruscans adapted, adopting Greek tactics and weaponry, including spears and phalanx formations. This strategic shift allowed the Etruscans to compete effectively with the Greeks and maintain regional dominance. Yet challenges persisted. The Etruscans engaged in prolonged conflicts with the Syracusans and Massilians. Simultaneously, the Italian tribes, such as the Umbrians and Latins, engaged in raiding and skirmishing tactics against both the Etruscans and Greeks, compelling both powers to adjust their military strategies. Facing constant threats, the Etruscans, much like the Greeks, had to evolve their military tactics. The traditional reliance on the phalanx proved ineffective against the agile skirmishers of the Italian tribes. Consequently, the Etruscans lightened their hoplites, incorporated more cavalry and light infantry, 
and developed mobile defensive strategies, including fortified cities and walls. In a parallel narrative, the Greeks, facing challenges from skirmishers like the Peltasts, shifted towards faster and more flexible warfare. This departure from the traditional phalanx tactics reflected broader cultural changes, emphasizing individualism and adaptability over the once dominant values of discipline and hierarchy. Adapting to the threat of mobile skirmishers, the Etruscans modified not only their military strategies, but also their arms and armor. They transitioned from heavy scale armor to lighter clothing, facilitating agility on the battlefield. Helmets evolved as well, favoring simpler, bowl-shaped designs that enhanced visibility and hearing, crucial in mountainous terrain. Two main helmet types emerged, the Etrusco-Thracian helmet, simpler and lightweight, ideal for mountain warfare, and the Montefortino helmet, offering enhanced protection with cheek guards, suitable for open field battles. Greaves, protecting the lower legs, persisted in Etruscan armor, providing defense against attacks to a vulnerable area. The iconic Hoplon shield remained a vital part of Etruscan armament. Its size compensated for the lack of body armor, offering extensive protection to the soldiers. Used in formation, the Hoplon became a formidable tool for pushing back enemies and controlling the battlefield. The Etruscans continued to use the Dory Spear, complemented by the incorporation of javelins for increased mobility and hit-and-run tactics. Their swords transitioning from longer Greek style to shorter Ziphos, and eventually knives, reflected the need for versatility and agility in mountain warfare. Etruscan hoplites, trained in phalanx formations, showcased adaptability by employing skirmish warfare in challenging terrains. Mobility in smaller groups allowed them to navigate mountainous regions effectively, utilizing hit-and-run tactics to counter adversaries. Their distinctive bowl-shaped helmets, providing superior visibility, played a crucial role in skirmish warfare, ensuring quick reactions in unpredictable environments. In summary, the Etruscans, confronted with evolving threats and challenges, demonstrated resilience through strategic adaptations in both military tactics and equipment, solidifying their dominance in ancient Italy for a considerable period.